You got water in your head, son? I don't know about water, but I do know about cerebrospinal fluid. And actually, water... Well, anyway, let's not get into water. That was just a joke. Okay, so... Your brain is not just fascinating because of all sorts of things. It's also fascinating because there is an intricate system, an intricate system of cavities that is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. That's a, a clearish fluid. If I remember correctly, you make about I think 20 milliliters an hour. You have about 150 milliliters at any point in time in your central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, and it gets refreshed all the time. It moves. How does it move? Because these cavities, I'll show you in a sec, are lined with ependymal cells. Ependymal cells are a type of glia cell that have little hairline, sort of hair-like appendages. And they do this sort of... Okay, I'll stop making that noise now. But in any case, they do that. So there's like little anemones. Anemones, that's the word, yes. Anemones. And they make that movement. And that, that movement causes that cerebrospinal fluid to flow. From where to where, though? From the lateral to the third to the fourth ventricle. Okay, open up the brain. Start your engines. Okay, what do you see here? This grayish bit, septum pellicidum, clear fence. This is a very thin membrane that separates the two lateral ventricles. The lateral ventricles are the only ventricles you have two of, one in each hemisphere. This is the right hemisphere, so on the other side, so on this side of that membrane, would be a ventricle, a lateral ventricle. What does that look like? Something like this. It's just a cavity, okay? That cavity is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Now, for the record, the cerebrospinal fluid is that fluid they take out a little bit from the bottom of your spine when they do a spinal tap. Okay? That's that. CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. As you can see, there's just a cavity. Now, the cavity has a specific shape. Now, here's the fun thing. I'm going to try to show you this side by side with a cast of those ventricles. Okay? So this is a little bigger, it's a little bigger than this model, but this is lateral ventricle. That's what I'm talking about now. That's this shape. But if you were to look inside of this, you can see that that's actually quite a large thing that goes inside the frontal lobe, inside the, what we call that, the, the, the back end that's coming to um, um, occipital lobe, right? All the way in there. Anyway, so it's quite big. That's what I'm saying. And this has several parts. Now, because this is blue on this black, I'll try to put my hand behind that so you can actually see. Lateral ventricle. Now, from the top, you see that you have two of these lateral ventricles, and this looks like that thing from Alien. Okay? So, it's not a xenomorph, it's just your lateral ventricle. It has an anterior horn, a posterior horn, and an inferior horn. Now, bear in mind, this is not the ventricle. This is a cast of the inside of the ventricle. So this is basically what, what that, that cerebrospinal fluid would be, right? Um, then you have the trigone, which, if I'm not mistaken, is this part where the ventricle kind of splits up into those three, yeah, where the inferior, sorry, the, the posterior horn, the inferior horn, and the anterior horn. Okay, so that's the lateral ventricle. The lateral ventricle drains into the third ventricle, which kind of makes sense. One, two, or one, two, and then three, right? You can see that happening here, right? You see that. It drains into, sorry, this part, and, sorry, this part, that is the third ventricle. Why is there a hole there? There's a hole there for this thing, mark 19 here, okay? the interthalamic nucleus, or the interthalamic adhesion. There's a couple of names for that, which we think is a, a sort of like a little fiber bundle that connects the two thalami, these things. There's one on each side. Okay, so because this is a fiber bundle, right, running from one thalamus to the other thalamus, two thalami connected in the middle, right, so the liquid runs around that, right, and that is that little hole. Okay, 
uh, the lateral ventricle drains. You see there's a little bit of a cavity there, right? Drains into that third ventricle, which has this shape, hypothalamus, thalamus. They form the walls of the third ventricle, right? So here, hypothalamus, right? Uh, thalamus and the interthalamic adhesion. So there is a little hole there called, it used to be called the foramen of Monroe, and I keep using that name because I think it's beautiful, named after Monroe, who described it for the first time. So that liquid drains from there, remember the ependymal cells, etc. Right? I'm sorry, I really stopped, I should, really should stop making that noise. Into the third ventricle. Now you only have one third ventricle. You have two lateral ventricles, one on each side, and they both drain through the foramina, foramina of Monroe into the third ventricle, which is here. Then the uh, third ventricle, through the sylvian aqueduct, drains into the fourth ventricle. Here's the sylvian aqueduct, and here you have the fourth ventricle. And that's this thing. This thing. Okay, it's kind of it's sort of diamond shaped, I suppose, diamond shaped. And then that has two foramina. Uh, there is the foramen of uh, Lushka, foramina of Lushka, I should say. Two on the side, drain out liquid. And then there is the, um, the medial one, medial, medial, lateral, Lushka, medial, no, I can't, I can't remember right now, because now I have Monroe in mind and I keep, I keep wanting to say Monroe, but that's not it. Okay, so I'll have to come back to that one. From there, from the fourth ventricle, right, cerebrospinal fluid drains into the central canal. And the central canal, you can see here, right, basically drains into, you can't really see that on this model, but let me quickly put together this brainstem I happen to have lying around here. Central canal, right? And if you put these two parts together, you can see there's actually a little hole at the bottom there. That is the central canal, drains into your spinal cord. And that is where, all the way at the bottom, where there aren't that many nerves, they can do a spinal tap, stick in a needle, take out some of the cerebrospinal fluid. And what does the cerebrospinal fluid do? Yeah, all kinds of things. It helps in your immune response, it drains uh, waste and, and uh, brings nutrients, uh, all, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of things. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. So, four ventricles, two lateral, one third, one fourth. That's pretty much it. Hope this was interesting. Glad to see you tomorrow. Magendi! That's it. That's it. Right in time. I was about to hit the off button on the camera. The, um, the, <laughs> I don't know the other ones. The lateral ones are Lushka and the, the medial one is Magendi, the uh, foramen of Magendi through which the fourth ventricle drains. There you go. Boom. Right in time.